everybody and welcome to Weld Fever. On today's episode we're going to do a little stick welding on square tubing. So stick with me, here we go. Okay, I'm, uh, first of all I'm going to show you the square tubing that we're going to be dealing with today. It's a two inch square tubing. The difference between this square tubing and some of the stuff that I've shown before is the thickness of the walls. This particular square tubing is a whopping 3 16 of an inch thick, which doesn't seem like a lot. However, uh, once you get a hold of this stuff in your hand, you realize quite quickly uh, how much weight and strength is added by that wall thickness. Uh, in the past, I've used uh, wall thicknesses of less than an eighth of an inch, uh, usually a .090 uh, wall tubing thickness, uh, and that is just fine for your regular uh, run-of-the-mill tables or uh, carts, homemade carts, shelving, whatever you're going to do. This particular project, however, deals with a material rack, and I'm going to be using this rack to store some of the uh, bits and pieces of uh, steel that I use on my other projects. And so because of that, it has to be quite strong. So I decided not to take any chances, use some of the thick stuff. Okay, so this material cart here is basically going to be, uh, at the moment, seven feet long. And at the very top here, I have one uh, rail, if you will, sticking out. And I'm about to fix this second one here. Uh, I have not welded this one as, in as of yet. And the whole purpose of this is to do that and show you how that goes. Now, because the material is so thick, I've chosen to stick weld this with 7018 rod. Um, the reason why I chose not to MIG weld it is simply because MIG welding has its place in terms of uh, fabrication, but when we get into stuff that's heavier and needs to be more structurally sound, I always choose a different process and preferably the stick process because of its structural properties, its higher strength. Uh, this is going to be holding uh, steel stock, and so it's going to be very heavy. It's going to be a lot of weight put on it. I don't really want to take any chances with it. It's a, one of those dicey kind of things because I hate to say that MIG welding is not effective because it is, especially if you do it right. So anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, if uh, any of you have seen my uh, MIG welding square tubing video, which is available on this channel, uh, you'll recall that uh, when doing a uh, joint like this with square tubing, you end up with several different surfaces. Now in this instance, we're going to have two T-joints. And the T-joints are the ones that are going to run right here. On this side and also around on the opposite side as well. Then also we're going to have a flare bevel joint. That'll be this joint here right here. And the reason why it's a flare bevel is because uh, this part of the tubing, if you can see, this part of the tubing here is rounded. So you're not going to have a straight end-to-end uh, -end meet here. You're going to actually have this end kind of hanging out there in no man's land and coming up to this rounded area. So it leaves a gap. And that can be a tricky situation, but if you bury your electrode in there properly and you spend more time on the tubing side rather than the open side, you'll do fine. Let's start with this one here. Actually, let's start by tacking these up. And then after that, we'll go ahead and uh, tackle this fillet well on this side and the opposite side. Okay, I'm gonna start by placing a small tack on this side. And now I'll go around and hopefully it won't bump the camera too badly. And put a tack on the other side. This one you won't be able to see, but I assure you, it'll be the same. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and do the fillet weld. Okay, I'm going to fire up here, and uh, basically I'm going from uh, right to left, and I'm using a little bit of a zigzag motion and up and down, just to fill in the uh, fillet, uh, get good fusion on both sides, 
and going relatively quickly just because it's not a really big fillet weld that we're trying to fill in here. Let the uh, molten puddle uh, cool a little bit before we uh, remove the slag and uh, the slag came off relatively easy which was nice. I uh, see a little line back there. It looks like undercut. On closer inspection, though, it was not. And here's a close-up of that. Believe it or not, it's a reflection of the lighting on the edge of the weld there. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a good camera angle on it. I know it does look like undercut. I specifically want to address this because undercut's a no-no. But uh, this, believe it or not, is good fusion without gouging. Okay, the next weld is the flare bevel, and you can see this is uh, has a kind of a gruesome appearance to it because there is this big gap here. Now the trick to doing this one is that when I strike my arc and when I run my rod, I'm going to spend more time on this side than I am here. So I'm going to spend most of the time here and just kind of lightly buzz over to this side to grab it. If I spend too much time here, I'm most assuredly going to blow a hole through it. And I don't want that. So yeah, watch the technique and uh, here we go. Well that felt like it went off pretty good, but the proof is in the pudding, so let's now go ahead and see what we have here. It appears that basically we have success. We have good fusion. Uh, we have no holes, no blowouts, and a pretty, you know, fairly decent looking weld bead. So this guy here is pretty well secure. Now I've got to uh, go off camera for a bit. You see I have these tabs on here, so I'm going to have to turn this all the way around to do the other one, and that'll take a minute, so I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the view from the other side, and you can see that big gaping hole there. Um, which looks intimidating at first, but I assure you it'll go in fairly well. And so now we strike up on it, and as you can see, I'm spending more time on the left side, which is the tubing uh, end of it, or excuse me, the rounded part of the tubing, as opposed to the end of, of the other opposing tubing coming in. It's important to spend more time on the left side here than the right, because as I mentioned before, with that huge hole, uh, the chances of blowing it out are real easy. So now at the termination of the weld, we can see it looks like everything went in there well. Let's go ahead and uh, clean it off and see what we got. Slag comes off easy. Penetration looks good. Fusion on each side looks good. Uh, and the weld bead doesn't look bad. After hitting it with a little bit of wire wheel, uh, everything is revealed. And pretty much I'm happy with this. A uh, little bit of sinking at the bottom there. Um, you know, can't get it exactly perfect sometimes, but so long as you have good fusion, good penetration, and no blowouts, then I can't complain about this one at all. And that's it. Here we are again at the end of uh, another successful uh, welding demonstration. As you can see, this is the way it looks all the way around. I'm pretty happy with the results. And here's the uh, money shot, the finished product being used. Real happy about it. Hey, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.